Last video I made a shitty prototype of a robot's leg. It was really bad, shaking like crazy and wasn't even able to jump. This time there's gonna be a lot happening. I'm gonna be getting my first CNC, I'm gonna scrap the old design and I'm gonna make a new leg with a different mechanism. Holy shit. First, I needed to change the test stand. My table has a piece of wood at the back, so I wasn't able to clamp the test stand to it. And since my laser CNC cutter just arrived, I decided I'm gonna make a wooden base plate and attach the test stand to it. This CNC was provided to me by LaserTree. I'm actually gonna be doing a full video on this, so if you want to see the assembly process, me learning to use the machine and doing some tests, I'm gonna post that video soon. But here's a quick montage. I have prepared everything, so here I got the CNC and the wood which I just attached with uh, some duct tape. This is the final base plate. I cleaned it up a bit because it was a bit dirty. This is exactly what I envisioned, just nice black finish around the sides. Engraving looks awesome. I was just about to record the assembling process and I almost got a heart attack. Holy shit. Absolute unit. 33 millimeters. Now it's much more rigid and it's not gonna take up half of my table. With the improved test stand, it was time to upgrade the leg mechanism. This is the current leg design. You have one motor per each joint and this moves the foot. It's simple, but there are drawbacks. If you want to move this joint, you're unnecessarily moving this heavy motor and this increases the inertia of the system, so the foot isn't gonna move that quickly. Our goal is gonna be moving this motor outside, so it's gonna be stationary. We can do this with a cool mechanism. This is a parallelogram. It's a four bar linkage where opposite sides have the same length and are parallel to each other. So these two sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel. This means that if you set this angle, the opposite side is just gonna copy it. This property is gonna be useful for our leg design. So instead of this motor, we can extend this link at the joint and make a parallelogram. Now we can move the motor from here to here. This way we have two motors here. One controls this angle, which gets copied to here and moves the foot. We also have the original motor, which rotates the whole linkage. These motors are really tall, so if we stack two of them onto each other, uh, it's gonna take up a lot of space. Ideally, the motors would be next to each other. And we can use another parallelogram to do this. Instead of this rod, I'm gonna make a whole part out of this. And the linkage is finished. If we want to move this joint, we just move this motor. The angle gets copied here. Since this is just one part, it gets copied here. It goes here and it moves the foot. We also still have the other motor, which rotates the whole linkage like this with some caveats. Now the two heavy motors can be positioned next to each other and move the whole linkage, which has a lower inertia. Another thing which is great about this is we can add a spring. So this way the leg would just want to fall down, but we want it to stand. So we could add a spring, for example, here. This spring would help to offset the torque of this joint, which means this motor is gonna have an easier job of keeping the leg standing. Hopefully this spring will be strong enough to make the leg stand and maybe even jump. I recently got this boom arm for my microphone and it's basically the same mechanism. So you can see this is the four bar linkage and this spring keeps the mechanism stable. You can move this around and the weight of the microphone doesn't make the mechanism just collapse to the ground. Ow, don't pitch. This is what the new leg mechanism looks like in CAD. You can move one joint with this servo motor and you can move the other joint with this one. As you can see, if I move this servo motor, the second joint moves as well. So I'm gonna have to move both of these motors simultaneously just to move one joint. Also, this mechanism is really compact. Since it's basically 2D, 
I was afraid it's not gonna be rigid in this axis. So I made these joints really thick and this helped with increasing the rigidity. I actually test printed this joint and it looks fine. It's obviously not ideal, but most of this elasticity comes from the 3D printed parts. There's also this thing with workspace. If I remove this joint, you can see that it sweeps 180 degrees with no problem. If I move the other joint, here it's fine, but on the other side, this is where the workspace ends. You can see the mechanism gets fucked up when it gets past this point. If I try to move the servo arm up from this position, it uh, wouldn't move correctly probably. And this is a problem, so I'm actually going to ignore it. Before we assemble the like, I want to show you my sponsor, which I think you'll find useful. PCBWay is celebrating its 11th year anniversary, and they are offering a bunch of discounts. There's discounts for PCBs and PCB assembly, but also for manufacturing stuff like 3D printing and CNC machining. There's also this lottery with an interesting prize pool, so you can win stuff like Raspberry Pis, oscilloscopes, and the first prize is actually a robot dog, which is quite thick. So if you're making some projects, now it's the time to buy. Now I need to cut the carbon fiber tubes. For the big tube I prepared this guide which is gonna help me with the cutting and for the smaller tube I just used tape because I've read that uh, the tube can uh, splinter if you cut it. The tape should provide a better finish. That went quite okay. I have the dimensions written out. The big tube should be 255 and 156 millimeters. I couldn't have picked a worse day, by the way. It's so hot outside. Assembly time. I got my laptop with the cat assembly test stand, bolt, screwdriver, the tubes I just cut and all the bars. I think it looks pretty cool. Obviously this structure isn't gonna be perfect. So you can see that it wiggles a bit. It's not really backlash, but it's just elastic. This problem with the linkage, that it goes like this. I'm gonna have to change that. There are some parts which are just wrongly designed. For example, I added this hole to the servo hub, so I would be able to bolt it to the linear rail and lock it in place like this. But I forgot that there's actually the guard under it. Also, this part blew up and I actually had a genius idea. So I want to add springs to this, so probably a spring going from here to here, just to help balance the weight of the leg. And since this piece split in two, I thought I was gonna use this broken piece, just uh, clamp it here and put the spring from this bolt to this black bolt. But then I decided I'm not gonna be a laser piece of shit because I'm gonna be putting these files on my Patreon. I want you guys to be able to print it as well, so I'm gonna design a piece that's gonna go here and I will be able to attach the spring to that. Also, I'm gonna fix this piece when you try to rotate it too much, 
is just gonna break. Right now this angle is 90 degrees and I'm gonna make it 45. So that should make the saw arm be more to the left and it shouldn't jam. Yeah, that's it. I'm gonna fix it and get back to you once it works. I'm 3D printing the parts and since I'm gonna be disassembling this anyway, I'm gonna calibrate the saw motors. I need to set the natural position of the two servo motors to get the maximum workspace. I've chosen this position. This servo motor is just pointing straight down, so I'm going to calibrate that one first since it's going to be easier. Here I have the circuit, it just uh, powers the servo with ground and 5 volts and it sends the angle by a digital pin from the ESP42. Okay, this servo is actually pointing straight down, so this is correct, I don't need to do anything. I'm just gonna bolt it down and this row is calibrated. To calibrate the second motor it's gonna be a bit challenging because of the design. This arm needs to be at 30 degrees just for the leg to be straight. I'm gonna subtract 30 degrees from this angle. I'm gonna upload the code. Now the angle is at minus 40 degrees so I'm going to set this to be zero degrees and it's actually impossible. So I'm gonna offset this by 60 degrees to the left. The servo arm is perfectly straight. And now when I set the angle to be the natural position, it should move at 30 degrees. The servo motor's natural position is at 30 degrees and we can assemble the leg. Since the parts were still printing, I decided to tackle the inverse kinematics. It is basically solved. I just needed to tweak a few things which is right, but it's not as easy as it sounds. I kind of knew this was going to be pain, so I decided to do it offline. So I just have the two servo motors like this. In CAT, I choose the position, I move the leg accordingly, then I look at the servo angles and check if they match reality. This took me quite a long time, as you can see. I think I got it to work. I'm gonna get some sleep and show you tomorrow. I have to assemble this leg. I want to see it move. Okay, this version looks much better than the one before, so I'm gonna mount it onto the rail and test out the electronics. And then I'm gonna go fucking sleep. I have this bolt that fits into this hole and goes through the holes in the rail. This might be one of the coolest things I've ever built. Okay, this is gonna be the first power-up test. Let's do the final part, which is gonna be adding the spring to this mechanism. I have two small springs in series, which means that the stiffness is lower. I printed this custom part. The second side of the spring I'm probably gonna attach just here. I want the spring to be stiff enough that when I put the leg here, it should automatically go backwards. So I'm gonna move this part a bit up.
Now the leg should support its own weight, so I removed the bolt which held the leg uh, with the rail. Test one, I added this spring to the mechanism, which will hopefully make the leg jump. Holy shit, nice. The cables keep getting jammed. I'm gonna sort out the cables, but that first jump looked really promising. I did some wire management, so now we can do test two of the jumping. Let's add some stiffness. So this is test three. I increased the stiffness by moving this piece upwards. So when I unplug the motors, uh, the leg just shot up. So the motors actually have to work to keep the leg downwards. Test four. I increased the voltage to 6.8 volts. Previously it was 5.3, I think. So this should increase the speed of the motors, but it's also gonna jitter, so this is not practical. Holy shit. Fuck, man, this is so good. I am extremely happy with this leg design. I finally made the robot jump, which is hard to do with these motors, And it's probably gonna be the design I go with for my final robot dock. I haven't derived the inverse kinematics, I just uh, solved it by trial and error. This was just a prototype, so I'm gonna make the design even better and explain the inverse kinematics then. Look forward to my future videos. All the files are gonna be on my Patreon. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.